And the cost of the Build Back Better bill in terms of adding to the deficit is zero, 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 because we're going to pay for it all. In addition to that, half of it is a tax cut. It's not spending money. It's a tax cut for working class people. Tax cut. It's, it's just extraordinary. The president continues to misinform the public. This week, once again, saying that this multi-trillion dollar tax and spend plan costs nothing. Negotiations are at a fever pitch right now. Senator Joe Manchin saying that the climate spending is a non-starter. Senator Christian Sinema saying that raising corporate taxes is a no-go. And AOC refusing to back infrastructure at all without all of the above passed. Joining me right now is Tennessee Senator Bill Haggerty. He is a member of the Foreign Relations, Appropriations, and Banking Committee. Senator, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks morning. so much for being here. Where, where are we on this? I know that Joe Biden wants this reconciliation bill passed by the time he goes to the climate summit in uh, Glasgow, Europe. What's your take? Will, you, will they get it done by then? Well, they're putting an immense amount of pressure on my colleagues in the Senate to, to get this passed. Again, my Democrat colleagues in the Senate, the Republicans are involved in no way in this negotiation. This is all a circular firing squad that's happening on the Democrat side. And if it were indeed true what Joe Biden says, that this costs nothing, then why is it so hard to negotiate? Uh, this is going to be a massive increase in taxes on the American economy. We've already seen the inflationary impacts of it, Maria. Real wages are down since Joe, White, Joe Biden took place, down 3 to 4 percent just since he took office. That's a tax on every American here. So this bait-and-switch activity that Biden's been involved in since the very day he took office uh, is really taking hold. The American public is tired of it. And what we're seeing is my Democrat colleagues are having a very hard time moving forward on this massive spending program. So two key questions remain. Um, the top line number, which is what they're focused on. They want to say that they're taking the, the cost down to two trillion or so. Uh, and then the sunsets, they say that some of these federal programs will sunset. In other words, go away. Uh, the, the top line seems to be 1.7 to 2.1 trillion range. The sunset question is obviously fluid. What can you tell us? Well, Bernie Sanders started out with six trillion. They moved it down to three and a half. Now they're talking numbers, as you mentioned, below two, around two. But if they use budget gimmicks like they do in Washington, where they score something rather than 10 years for just five years or three years, that's just a trick, particularly if what we're talking about is a government dependency program, which this bill is chock full of government dependency programs. What happens after a family has adjusted their style of living to the new payments that are coming from the government? Are we going to just put them on their heels and take it away? I think we all know what the answer to this is. By the time our children and grandchildren have finished paying for these government dependency programs, it's going to amount to tens of trillions of dollars. Wow. Well, we're also talking about a pretty heavy cost with regard to inflation that we're yes. all paying more money for everyday items. Let's take a look at some of the moves that we've seen just as a result of all of the free money coming at us since March when uh, you signed, when the president signed into law the $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. You've got inflation soaring, gasoline up 42 percent, energy overall 25 percent, used cars, trucks 24 percent, food up four and a half percent, like eggs, chicken, et cetera, clothing, transportation uh, services. Will we see these numbers worsen if, in fact, this reconciliation plan goes through? I think we absolutely will, because the government will inject trillions of dollars more into the economy. The effect was pretty immediate when the $1.9 trillion package came through in March. What we've seen is month over month an increase in inflation here in America. It's the most pernicious tax yeah. of all. They try to argue it's transitory, but it's not transitory. There are many aspects of it that may have to do with supply chain dislocations. But over the long haul, when they've killed our independence of, on energy, when they've raised our, our energy costs as dramatically as they have, every American feels this when they go to the pump. Every good that we buy has to be transported across America. Try to yeah. buy a house in Tennessee, up over 20 percent. This inflation is not transitory. Yeah. Senator, I know that you've been to the border, as have I. I want to take a break and uh, show our audience this uh, brand new exclusive video that Fox News has obtained. It's migrants being secretly flown into private airports. Uh, this uh, video is uh, being flown into the Westchester, New York airport in the middle of the night. Why the Biden administration is being so secretive about dropping off migrants in, uh, in, in our neighborhoods across the country. Do you have plans to visit the southern border? Uh, I've been there before, and I haven't. I mean, I know it well. I guess I should go down, but the, but, but the whole point of it is I haven't had a whole hell of a lot of time to get down. I've been spending time going around looking at the $900 billion worth of damage done by, uh, by hurricanes and floods and, and weather and, tra and traveling around the world. But uh, 
I plan on, now my wife, Jill, has been down. She's been on both sides of the river. She's seen the circumstances there. Yeah, that was Joe Biden once again lying to the American people. Fox News has fact-checked that statement. And in fact, there is no evidence of Joe Biden at the border whatsoever. He uh, flew into El Paso at one point on a campaign stop, but did not go to the southern border, as he just said. Not as senator, not as vice president, nor as commander-in-chief, which, uh, of course, the policies... His policies have worsened this situation. Nearly 1.7 million migrant apprehensions over the past year, the highest number in history. Of course, that does not include the hundreds of thousands of others who have gotten away. They are now in the country. I am back with Senator Bill Haggerty. Senator, how does this president get away with these bold-faced lies, despite no record whatsoever uh, of this in his nearly 50 years in public office? It's incredible that he even tried, Maria, but you've done such a fabulous job, more than anybody of educating the American public on what the mainstream media will not. Again, they're giving him a pass on what is a total lie, a fabrication. He's precipitated the greatest national security crisis that we've seen in our lifetimes at this southern border. Yet he can't find time to go there. He can't find time to even own up to this. Uh, this is a complete disaster of his own making. As you mentioned, they're now on track to have over two million people crossing this border illegally. And they're piping them into our homes, into our, into our, into our neighborhoods, into our, into our cities. It's just amazing what they're doing. They're turning every town into a border town right now. Well, you made the point when I've spoken with you in the past about how you knew that they were flying migrants secretly into Chattanooga. Now the New York Post has busted them. They actually went to the Westchester private airport and, and shot you know, video of these people being let off in Westchester and then got, going on buses. Uh, we don't know where they're going, uh, but we know that rather than sending them back to their country and not allowing them to jump the line of those people who are waiting to get into America and get a green card legally, uh, they are actually just putting them and uh, resettling them in, in our neighborhoods across the country. What can you do about it? Anything? Well, I put forward legislation to bring this, bring this to a halt, to, to actually force them to disclose what they're doing. Uh, we are in a position right now where our local law enforcement don't have any information. Our schools don't have information. Will they be overwhelmed? Our hospitals don't know how many people are going to arrive that are unvaccinated, that are sick. The Biden administration has been completely silent about all of this because they're trying to move these people through the dark of night, as you mentioned. We saw it happen first here in Chattanooga. My colleague, Marsha Blackburn, in the Senate, and Chuck Fleischman in the House, we push forward immediately, demanding that the administration give us information. We put forward legislation now requiring them to do so. This is a massive problem, and it's a security problem for our nation, one that's got to be resolved. Yep. All right, Senator, it's good to have you this morning. Great and by the way, Maria. I am very sorry about your volunteers last night, sir. Getting beaten by Alabama, Senator Haggerty. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, We'll Maria. talk soon. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.